Karishika. This is a movie made for psychopaths. The horror genre in Nigeria has been an eyesore. It's not as lucrative as it was back in the days. Most directors avoid it like it's a musical. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? The earlier days of horror in Nigeria had no filter. Everyone wanted a piece of that pie and you can't blame anyone for doing it. It sold only because as a country, we have more folklore than actual laws. And these films tried so hard to be relatable and it's weird because these movies were extreme in terms of the subject matter but we could see ourselves in their shoes. And with the endless supply of myth, scriptwriters would have one objective, make a whole generation have PTSD. But I beg you, watch this movie now and you will be shocked on why you were ever scared about it in the first place. Forget what I said earlier, the movie is scary. As the pocket of the creators got bigger, the ones who lost were the viewers. These guys would dress up, leave their house, go to video clubs, select the scariest movie because it might be good, go home, play it, and midway into watching it, they realized that then, what the hell did I just buy? Pause the movie, remove it from the DVD, put another disc in it. These guys were about to watch porn. When Karishika came out, it was praised to be one of the best scary movies in Nigeria. And it wasn't because of how scary it was, but it was how horrific the CD package looked like. Who made this? <laughs> it screams, don't buy me. Karishika, Karishika, queen of the jungle. What people forget about Karishika was that it wasn't a horror movie, but a porno. Now, Amen. Do you guys know he's a pastor? <laughs> Just in case you guys missed that. <laughs> Why is he looking that way? What was up with him? He died. Ah. Oh well. As long as he finished, eh? Guys. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? The movie was adventurous for its time. When you watch it, you have this weird feeling of, wow, is this how Nigeria looked like in the days? I know for a fact that this is definitely Festac. The clothes worn in the movie are a good example of how time has passed. The men wore these big suits because they were light years ahead of the world. The thought process of the tailor was, what if he gets bigger, guys? The women dressed mostly in traditional wears, but when they went corporate, you trust that the shoulder pads had to come out. The the effects were beautiful, they surprisingly did not do a lot of it, but when they did, it just made sense. Anytime you had a transformation, actors would raise their eyes so the editors would be able to morph it well. But when they had to do more special effects, <laughs> they pulled it off, but the computer would have to suffer, guys. <laughs> When you think of the characters, you are amazed of what we were capable of pulling off in this movie. The main actor was a typecast, not in the movie industry, but in Nigeria, because we all know all fair ladies have a bit of witchcraft in them. She was sent by Lucifer to tempt and destroy humans. Does that not sound like 80% of the girls living in Lekki? Now that I have satisfied your nostalgia, let's talk about the bad. There was an influx of horror stories, so most of the stories were not unique, but it was a race on who can make the best horror movie with the same outline. The local critic would not like this, but I had to do it. <laughs> we tend to think movies like this were groundbreaking, but when you put in account the state of Nigeria, then you start seeing why movies like this were made. We're a religious country, so it always had to end with pastor destroys demon, and it worked. But then it hits you. If you think people were cheating now, back in the days, it was worse. Other ladies were capable of stealing actual families. So what better way to stop this by saying, hey, married men, the next lady you bring to this house might be a demon, so stay with your wife. <laughs> A writer from Zikoko said the special effect budget was 1-5. <laughs> Come on, George, why would you even think about that? <laughs> we will never be able to beat nostalgia and no one should even try it. Kashika was an experiment that was successful and it can't be questioned. Movies made at this point in time tells more than what we see on the screen. It shows how we used to think, how we used to dress, how we used to love. And the last thing it teaches us is as long as you finish, <laughs> you can die in peace. <laughs>